Maybe yes, just Marina, one. I suppose that we can start. Yes, we can start. Okay. So, bonjour, chers mesdames et messieurs. L'équipe de CERBA est très heureuse de vous souhaiter la bienvenue et vous voir aussi nombreux à notre conférence d'aujourd'hui avec le Belarus. So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The CERBA team is happy to welcome you today at our online conference. Okay. So let me uh, introduce myself. Marina Bielski, uh, newly appointed Serba Regional Director in Montreal and Ottawa. And uh, I would like to start right from the beginning that uh, this event won't be uh, possible without uh, the support of my colleagues, without the support of uh, Chargé d'Affaires, uh, of Belarus in Canada and all their uh, key colleagues and partners. So we are very numerous and thank you very much for making this happen. Uh, I will shortly introduce Surba, uh, even if I know that everybody knows what Surba is doing, but I will try to emphasize it a little bit from a different side, according to uh, what we are facing currently. So in his recent appeal to the public, the founder of CERBA, Mr. Nathan Hunt, enunciated the association's vision towards responsible business development. So the CERBA team is uh, committed to value-oriented business development practices, such as social responsibility, inclusiveness, gender equality, green technologies, uh, leadership, activism, and so on. And uh, uh, Surba listens carefully to businesses, governments, industrial communities, financial institutions, other entities, and valuable consultants, of course, that are operating in Canada and Eurasia very, so we listen to you very carefully. And then, okay, we become your voice to the community. Along with Surba, businesses sit together with government and society, open up, share, learn, contribute, evolve and progress, expand in Eurasia and globally. And of course, Surba adjusts its activities in accordance with the global agenda. And as many other entities have already done, Surba is directing towards what we call healing the world. And uh, I would now present uh, our number one speaker, who is doing also the job of uh, a moderator. So, Evgeny Rusak, Chargé d'Affaires, Embassy of Belarus in Canada. Evgeny, please uh, say very important. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Marina, for, for introduction. Good morning, everyone in Canada. Good evening, everyone in Belarus. Once again, for those who don't know me, I'm Evgeny Rusak, Chargé d'Affaires of Belarus to Canada. And, uh, as well, I am today one of moderators for our event. So I would like to welcome all of you on our conference on the uh, cooperation between Belarus and Canada in agriculture, food processing, green technologies, and agri-machinery. Uh, well, the world experience is uh, not uh, the easiest times. And on the one hand, it is pity that we did not manage to have our conference here in Ottawa as was planned previously. On the other hand, this is a great advantage because uh, having this conference as an internet bridge, um, we manage not only to attract more speakers from Minsk, uh, which is important, but also what is even more important, we managed to bring together uh, people from different regions of Canada, and this is a great actually. Uh, so, and today uh, we have such distinguished speakers as um, a Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Belarus, Alek Kravchenko, and the Deputy Minister of Agriculture and Food of Belarus, Igor uh, Brilo. Also, uh, when preparing for the conference, we received a lot of questions regarding the public procurement system and public procurement procedures in uh, Belarus. And uh, that is why we invited the Director of the National Center for Marketing of Belarus, Mr. Valery Sadoha, who will speak on the procurement system uh, in my country. Among the speakers, we also have a representative of the Canadian companies who is working, uh, who has been already working in Belarus or in other countries of the Eurasian Economic Union, and they will be happy to share their 
success stories uh, of doing business uh, with my country. So I would like to thank personally uh, Marina Bialski, the regional director of Serba in Montreal and in Ottawa, uh, who made this event uh, possible and who kindly shared the mission of co-moderator uh, today. And uh, Marina and I will say a few words on the technical aspects of our upcoming conference and afterwards we will be able to provide the e-floor to our distinguished speakers. Please, Marina. Yes. Uh, so I would like to start first uh, with uh, the goal of today's conference, okay, if it's possible, okay, even we will have uh, a lot of questions to discuss, but for us to be able to spot like opportunities, uncover challenges, reveal perspectives in the industries, so we will try to go around those key words and we please ask you to be open and share whatever you leave. Now the technical part. So please identify your accounts very well. Uh, so your full name. Uh, this is okay, for proper networking because we want to know who is there and who, uh, whom we could address questions. Okay, and then. Uh, so to avoid any background noise, please get connected from a quiet room. Voice communications uh, will be open only at the end. So before that time, please keep your sound off. Okay, the conference will be held in two languages, English and Russian. Uh, when uh, communicating with the Belarusian side by voice, please speak a bit slower than usually, making a short pause, maybe after two or three sentences for an interpreter to make translations. We welcome you to use video at all times. Uh, those of you who have questions, okay, we invite you to uh, ask them in the, in the chat and I will speak uh, in a few slides, okay, uh, how you should or how we advise you to use uh, chat. I will now introduce you briefly our uh, third moderator, Dominique Pion, Canadian lawyer from Quebec province. He will be uh, responsible for chats. He will be uh, reading your questions and choosing the most interesting ones to ask uh, to our speakers and distinguished guests. So now about chat, how to use chat. So use chat as much as you can to be seen, to be known and to be remembered. What can you do? You can introduce yourself and your company. You can share with participants your interests and your achievements, opportunities you foresee in the industry that you operate, challenges you face, solutions you, you propose. And we also invite you to ask questions to speakers and distinguished guests in the chat at any time. So Dominique will be taking care of that and it will speed up okay, our conference. And we have uh, one more announcement because we are doing in the events online. So this is a new opportunity that we are using. Um, we are asking you okay, uh, to share, well, asking you politely and kindly to share uh, the following information on social media so that you participate in today's conference, uh, the lessons you learned, again, your success stories, maybe your advice, the advice you received, and the winner with the most hashtags, Surba Belarus, will be invited for an interview. So uh, don't uh, lose time. Look so much you have to do not to miss these opportunities. So I'm done with all the technical parts. Evgeny, we are welcoming Belarusian. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Marina. And now, without further ado, we should start because we have our agenda being um, oversubscribed and we have more speakers than we have time. So I would like to ask all the speakers to make your presentations relatively short and they uh, should not exceed seven minutes. Uh, and now I would like to give the e floor to Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Belarus, uh, Mr. Alek Kravchenka. Uh, this is the person whom the majority of you should know for certain because he has been uh, responsible for bilateral relationship for a long period of time and Minister Deputy Minister Kravchenko visited Canada lot, lots of times. So, uh, and Deputy Minister for sure uh, knows exactly where in the avenue for successful cooperation between Belarus and Canada. So, Mr. Kravchenko, the floor is yours now. 
Thank you so much, Evgeny, for your very generous introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, greetings from Minsk. And I am pleased to take advantage of technology to address representatives of Canadian businesses as the current unfortunate pandemic made my trip to Canada impossible. But I do hope that, first of all, I do hope that this new format of our conference will be a success. And second, I do hope that after the situation clears and everything is fine, we restart traveling to each other and meeting each other in person and having the same conference again in person in Ottawa, in, in Montreal, in, in Vancouver or in Minsk. Having said that, uh, let me thank personally Serba for inviting me to welcome you to this conference. Since 2017, when all trade restrictions were lifted by Canada, the relationship has been improving. It became possible, first of all, as a result of our mutual interest to better it through enhanced cooperation and dialogue. Both our governments and businesses are interested in translating the improved political atmospherics into mutual beneficial business projects. I represent the foreign ministry, which is responsible not only for foreign policy, but also for foreign trade. And I would like to make it very clear. Belarus is keen to further expand commercial and political cooperation with Canada. During the last three years, we have achieved a lot. A number of ministerial meetings were held. Several rounds of consultations between foreign ministries took place contacts between members of parliament of two countries were renewed, cooperation between ministries and universities of Belarus and Canada uh, was launched, and the first Belarus-Canada Business Forum was arranged. Export Development Canada considers providing support to Canadian companies planning on or currently doing business in Belarus. Canadian Commercial Corporation could also consider working in Belarus or in the markets of the third countries. These are very positive signs that the partnership is gaining momentum after getting out of slumber. So again, it is safe to say now that all trade obstacles that used to be in our relations have been lifted. Ladies and gentlemen, it is official, Belarus is open for business. We are an export-oriented economy as we export more than 50% of what we produce. I believe our being a member of the Eurasian Economic Union is a strong advantage. When a Canadian business opens a manufacturing or processing facility in Belarus, it gains access to the huge market of the Union of more than 180 million people. Belarus is an immediate neighbor of the European Union, so European supply chains are really close. Let me also inform you that we are currently working on arranging a visit of the Canadian trade mission to Belarus. We thought June 2020, we still hope so. So we'll see how the situation develops and tentatively the, the term of, of the visit is still June 2020. This important event, we hope, will coincide with the International Agricultural Exhibition Belagro to be held on June uh, the 2nd to the 6th, which you would learn more about during today's conference. We are waiting for a decision of CAN expert on approval of the server request on the mission. And if it is approved, my understanding is uh, Canadian companies would be granted an opportunity to partially refund their travel expenses, which is a great thing, of course. Esteemed Serbo representatives will explain it to you in details. The Belarusian side will be happy to host the second Belarus-Canada Business Forum during the visit of the trade mission. The forum could become yet another important step in taking our commercial relationship forward. For our part, we guarantee the individual programs for all Canadian participants in accordance with your areas of interest. Canada is far from Belarus but the world we live in is very small. Distance from Toronto, Montreal, or Ottawa to Minsk is less than a round trip from Ottawa to Vancouver. 
so you are most welcome to consider Belarus as your business and investment partner. Moreover, we made travel into Belarus easier. Now foreign citizens of 80 countries, including Canada, can enter Belarus without visas for up to 30 days. The Belarusian side welcomes further contacts with Canada in areas of agriculture, green technology, food processing, and agricultural machinery. And once again, let me take this opportunity to invite you all to visit Belarus as part of the Canadian trade mission to be held later this year. I wish you a successful and fruitful conference and good luck in your business with Belarus. Thank you so much for your attention and stay healthy. Yes. So thank you so much, uh, Marina. I don't know whether, whether we are starting to ask questions now or we will have the questions and answers session uh, at the end of the conference. We can all, I think we can call it uh, now. And so far we have technical uh, issues here. I just provided our participants with uh, the phone numbers that they can call. And Dominique, do we have any question that came up to now? No, I'm, I'm okay. Uh, I'm okay. Thank you. Yes, I mean, uh, Jon, please, our moderator. Okay. Yes, hi, everyone. I do have one question from Mr. Kavchenko. Uh, I understand that uh, trade between countries are usually facilitated by trade agreements between the government of each country. Are there any negotiations or is there any interest in the side of both parties to have a trade agreement between Belarus and Canada? There is definitely interest to start a negotiation on the trade agreement on our side. I think that the Canadian side would also be interested. So thank you for this excellent question which really flags us this necessity to, to revisit this idea because I have, don't think that we have uh, looked into that uh, in, in several past years. So let's do that. Let's do that together with our uh, colleagues at Global Affairs Canada. And once again, thank you for, for, for flagging this, this necessity for the business community. Thank you. So thank you so much, Mr. Kravchenko, for your kind words and for having this great plan to restart negotiations about the legal framework with the Global Affairs Canada. Well, agriculture is one of the promising areas for cooperation between Belarus and Canada. And in 2018, we already had a Belarusian delegation representing the agricultural sector who's, who visited Canada. and. Um, we found, uh, found out that um, uh, we have a governmental support and, uh, to the agricultural sector. And the uh, agricultural sector is well developed in both countries. And we do not want to be uh, competitors, but uh, we are looking for partnership in this field. And that is why today we invited the uh, Deputy Minister of uh, uh, Agriculture and Food of the Republic of Belarus, uh, Mr. Igor Brillo, who headed Belarusian delegation in 2018 and uh, who uh, would be able to present us the most promising areas of cooperation in agriculture field. So, Mr. Brulor, now the floor is given to you. Добрый день, уважаемые коллеги. Позвольте, я кратко охарактеризую экспортный потенциал нашей страны в сельскохозяйственной отрасли. Good morning, uh, dear colleagues. Uh, please let me uh, uh, in brief uh, uh, give a reference of uh, export potential of our uh, country. Республики Беларусь сельское хозяйство занимает приоритетное место. Сегодня, согласно глобальному рейтингу продовольственной безопасности, наша страна характеризуется как государство, обеспечивающее свою продовольственную безопасность, включая доступ к финансированию фермеров, 
наличие широких возможностей для производства безопасного продовольствия, минимальных потерь с момента уборки урожая до поставки потребителей и самообеспеченность внутреннего рынка продовольствия. Characterized as a state that ensures its own food security, including access to financing of farmers, availability of ample opportunities for safe food production, minimal losses from harvesting to delivery to the consumer, self-sufficiency of the domestic food market, balanced diets of residents on the content of proteins, fats, and micronutrients. Uh, just a moment. Uh, презентацию можно сейчас организовать, да? Сейчас, следующий. Uh -huh. Сейчас, uh -huh. Yes, we finally you, have You will have a presentation. Yes, uh, just a moment. There will be the next uh, uh -huh. slide. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, uh, the share of agriculture in the economy of our country is about 6% of gross domestic products, 88% of agricultural lands, 8% of the number of employees, and about 16.8% of the total export of goods of our country. Thanks to technical modernization and re-equipment of agricultural processing organizations, our country has reached a high level of production volumes for certain types of agricultural products. In 2018, 775 kilograms of milk, 129 kilograms of meat, 355 pieces of eggs, 184 kilograms of vegetables, 618 kilograms of potatoes, <clears throat> 649 kilograms of grain, were produced per capita in Belarus. The total export of Belarusian food products in 2019 surpassed 5.5 billion US dollars and grew up uh, by 4.5% compared to 2018. The geography of deliveries exceeds 100 countries. Uh, mm -hmm. Agriculture of the Republic of Belarus has a developed livestock industry. Dairy cattle sector accounts for more than 50% of agricultural products and is, is the basis of the export potential of the country's agricultural complex. Milk production in the Republic of Belarus demonstrated constant, uh, consistent, uh, consistent growth year to year, while in 2013 it was 6.6 .6 million tons of milk. In 2019, we reached the level of 7.4 million tons. The export of dairy products in 2019 amounted to 2.3 billion US dollars, accounting for about 60% of its production and 42% of total food exports. The geography of exports of dairy products in 2019, totals uh, 58 countries. Belarus is one of the five leading countries in the export of dairy products, and our country ranks third in the world of animal butter, fourth on cheese and cottage cheese, and fifth on non-fat dry milk. Beef cattle breeding plays a special role in strengthening agrarian economy and meat processing industry is one of the priority and export-oriented sectors of the country's economy. Due to the high value of meat products in the nutritional structure of the population, Belarus has seen steady growth in livestock and poultry production. In 2019, meat production reached 1.2 million tons, which is 11.5% higher than in 2012. Meat processing industry in the country is fast developing thanks to the introduction of new technologies and the continuous modernization of equipment and machinery, complete processing of meat and all related products. We have achieved some success, which allowed us to occupy a leading position in the world ranking for meat production per capita. In 2018, Belarus produced 129 kilograms of meat per person. 
which exceeds the figure of four individual countries of the European Union and the CIS countries. In 2019, Belarusian meat exports amounted to 1 um, billion US dollars. The main share in the structure of export of meat products is beef, 54.1%, uh, 54 poultry meat, 29.2%, sausages, 9.2%. In the production of meat products, exports account for 29%. Belarus is one of the 10 leading meat exporting countries, being well seventh on the chilled beef and ninth on the poultry meat. The geography of meat products uh, exports is expanding from year to year, and by the end of 2019, included 21 countries, 18 countries in 2018. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, uh, so, uh, Honorable uh, Deputy Minister wants to add some information. Уважаемые коллеги, мне хочется сказать, что в целом объем товарооборота между нашими странами за прошлый год составил 12,3 миллионов долларов США. Это мы приросли порядка 116 процентов к уровню 2018 года. То есть у нас хорошая положительная динамика в сотрудничестве. In 2019, trade in agricultural products and food products uh, between our countries reached uh, 12.3 million, uh, which is 116% uh, compared to 2018. Uh, <clears throat> Main export items are molasses, ready to use, or canned fish, water, including mineral water, dairy products, cream butter, cheese, ice cream, uh, coated cheese. Основные импортные позиции это рыба мороженая, крепкие спиртные напитки, сырье, пушно меховое, сахар. Main import items are frozen fish, alcohol, raw furs, and sugar. Я хочу отметить, что Уже по итогам января месяца текущего года наш товарооборот составил чуть более полумиллиона долларов США. Это тоже 116 процентов роста аналогичному периоду января месяца 2019 года. I want to admit that in January 2020 the volume of trade in agricultural products and food products between the Republic of Belarus and Canada amounted to uh, 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 to uh, 573,000 US dollars, which is 116% uh, compared to the same period uh, of the last year. Во время моего посещения живого скота канадской селекции в Республику Беларусь о необходимости поставок спермопродукции в нашу страну. Кроме того, мы говорили о том, что Канада нам представляет интерес оборудования по сексированию спермы. Uh, actually, during my last trips to Canada uh, with my colleagues, uh, uh, several times uh, I admitted uh, the interest uh, to the vital interest in the supply of Canadian livestock and as well uh, receiving uh, semen uh, and uh, sexting, uh, semen sexting equipment uh, as well. В нашей стране поддержанием в целом системы селекционно-племенной работы в животноводстве, созданием высокопродуктивных селекционных стад в сельскохозяйственных организациях занимается подведомственно нашего министерства организации Белпемжих объединений. In our country, uh, uh, the Bell uh, Plan Jeep Abidinia Genetic Heritage Center, subordinated to the Ministry of Agriculture, is engaged in maintaining a system of genetic livestock breeding, creating highly productive genetic uh, herds in agricultural organizations. На встречах с руководством компании CIMEX, на встрече с руководством Министерства сельского хозяйства Канады, мы говорили о готовности к налаживанию связей с Канадой в части поставок племенной продукции, обменом опытом ведения селекционной племенной работы без посредников напрямую. 
during uh, my trips to Canada and uh, during the uh, negotiations with them and with CMEX uh, group and uh, uh, Canada Agriculture, uh, <coughs> uh, 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 we uh, were um, talking about the necessity of uh, uh, supplying of pedigree products, material, and exchange of experience and breeding without uh, intermediaries. Ну, хочется сказать, что более года мы вели такого рода диалог с канадской стороной. И вот, наверное, отрадно то, что перед нашей видеоконференцией буквально сегодня нам пришло, наконец-то, предложение канадской стороны, компании Simex, на прямое сотрудничество с нашим предприятием Белплем Жив Объединение. Был предоставлен нам каталог всех пород, которые предлагает компания Simex, минимально уже оговорены условия сотрудничества, минимальное обязательство количества определенного купленных импортированных из Simex в 2020 году до спермы, ну и ряд других условий контракта. Поэтому я искренне хочу в заключении своего выступления сказать искренние слова благодарности за понимание вопроса и поверьте, что мы с нашей стороны будем делать все правильно, профессионально, чтобы наши отношения между нашими предприятиями, компаниями, ну, наверное, только были на благо нашему торговому, нашему сотрудничеству и в целом на благо сельскохозяйственной отрасли как Республики Беларусь, так и Канады. Спасибо огромное за внимание. More, uh, uh, more than a year we were negotiating uh, the uh, possibility of uh, supplying uh, genetic materials. And actually, I'm happy to announce that uh, Canadian um, company Simex uh, made uh, uh, a great offer for us uh, to establish direct uh, cooperation between uh, Belplem Jeep uh, Abitinia and uh, this, this company. And actually, uh, we are very uh, grateful uh, for their uh, terms of uh, cooperation. And uh, uh, I hope uh, that uh, our cooperation uh, will be continued and uh, uh, for the benefits of uh, agricultural sector of, of both countries. Thank you so much for attention. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Mr. Brill, for your kind uh, presentation. Very informative. Uh, now, Marina, do we have questions? Marina or Dominic, do we have questions? Yes. Dominic, would you call? Yes. So, uh, again, I invite everyone who has questions to uh, write them in the chat. Uh, during the speaker's uh, comments. I do have one question to uh, Mr. Prelo. Uh, I've heard about uh, what are called like, agro towns in Belarus. To me, this is a novel concept and I'd like to hear a bit more about it. Can you describe to us briefly what are agro towns? Sorry, please, could you, uh, it's a little bit uh, difficult. Uh, because it sounds well, uh, uh, yeah, I will translate if possible. Uh, вопрос заключался в том, uh, что в Канаде слышали о таком понятии, как агрогородки. В то же время uh, нет четкого понимания. Поэтому, Игорь Вячеславович, помогите канадцам понять, что такое белорусский агрогородок. Спасибо за вопрос. Наверное, мы сталкиваемся с тем, что молодые специалисты, выпускники вузов, не совсем хорошо и с большим желанием порой приходят работать в деревню и заниматься сельскохозяйственным профилем. И один из основных компонентов, конечно, это социальный вопрос. И наша была задача применительно к тем сельскохозяйственным крупным объектам животноводства, это молочное скотоводство, свиноводство, птицеводство, выстраивать некую инфраструктуру 
которая бы обеспечивала человеку нормальную жизнедеятельность. Прежде всего, это жилье, какие-то минимальные вещи в медицинском обслуживании, какая-то инфраструктура, где можно было молодежи отдохнуть, провести как-то время, какое-то кафе, ресторан, какой-то клуб, кинотеатр. Поэтому мы созда хотели создать в сельском хозяйстве, в деревнях, какой-то мини-социальный проект, который бы позволял молодым ребятам, которые приходят работать, ну, чувствовать себя более-менее, скажем так, современно. И основной вопрос, конечно, это жильевой фактор. Мы предоставляли под хорошую кредитную программу жилье. Это выгодно было специалистам. Поэтому мы таким образом думали закрепить молодежь на сельскохозяйственном нашем производстве и в деревнях. So actually, uh, the, uh, thank you so much for the question. That's a very uh, vital one. Uh, actually, uh, as uh, I mentioned, agriculture uh, plays an important role in our country. So we have to uh, think uh, over uh, the people who are going to live in the countryside uh, and to be able to provide uh, uh, best uh, facilities uh, for them to uh, to live there so uh, uh, agriculture helps uh, the economy so we need to help people who are involved in the economy uh, so uh, there was uh, the, the plan uh, for uh, uh, given a credit line uh, uh, was uh, developed uh, to allow uh, our uh, young specialists uh, acquire uh, uh, estates, uh, uh, ho ho houses uh, 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 on the basis of uh, cheap credits uh, and to be able to live there, to settle there. So that was uh, the answer uh, for, the, uh, for the question uh, of uh, creating Uh, these uh, uh, facilities and uh, we are still working uh, uh, for the development of uh, modern conditions uh, for the people uh, modern and uh, uh, helpful conditions uh, for uh, living and working in the countryside so great thank you so much now uh, I suppose that we have keep time and uh, uh, All the other questions will be asked during the question and answer session at the end. So, uh, Mr. Brill, once again, thank you so much for the interesting presentation and information. And uh, now we would like to say that we in Belarus and ULE hold a very big uh, agricultural exhibition uh, named um, Bel Agra. This is one of the biggest exhibitions uh, in the Eurasian Economic Union. And uh, it covers not only the agricultural products, but also it covers such spheres as green technologies, uh, as food industry, food processing industry, and agri-machinery. And, uh, well, we had a plan to coincide a visit of the Canadian Trade Mission to Minsk with this international event this June. Uh, we are not sure, but uh, it seemed that the current situation with COVID-19 has been disrupting our plan this year but anyway we decided to tell you a few words few more words about this exhibition uh, since it holds it happens every year it happens annually and uh, canadian businessmen uh, will have possibility to visit this exhibition next year and we believe that visit to belarus time to this international event is a very smart and good idea for every canadian Uh, businessman who is dealing with agriculture sector and uh, now we would like to give the floor to director of Minsk Expo Mr. Vladimir Bulavitsky. Uh, Minsk Expo is a company uh, which is responsible for arranging international uh, fairs in Belarus and I hope the, that Mr. Bulavitsky will tell us more about Belagra exhibition and I hope that you will find this information interested Uh, but uh, right before the speech, uh, as we were informed, we will have a short but very informative 
and positive video on the Bell Agra Fair. So, uh, colleagues, please go ahead. Ну, So great, thank you so much. Now, Mr. Bulavitsky, now it's your turn, please. Добрый день, уважаемые дамы и господа. Позвольте приветствовать вас на видеоконференции по развитию белорусско-канадского сотрудничества в сфере сельского хозяйства. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pleased to welcome you here today on the meeting devoted to the development of Belarus and Canadian cooperation in the field of agriculture. Несколько слов о нашей компании. Выставочное общество Минск Экспо на протяжении 30 лет является ведущим выставочным оператором в Республике Беларусь и проводит более 20 международных специализированных выставок в год по различным тематикам – сельское хозяйство, строительство, металла и деревообработка, автоматизация и электроника, сварка и резка, легкая промышленность, клининг, пищевая индустрия, медицина, автомобилестроение – uh, first of all, I'd like to say a few words about our company Minsk Expo. Uh, nowadays, it's the leading organizer of international exhibitions in Belarus. Annually, we hold about 24 international specialized exhibitions that cover nearly all key sectors of national economy, including agriculture, mechanical engineering, woodworking, construction complex, and food industry. 
Среди наших проектов признанный выставочный бренд Международная агропромышленная выставка Белагра и сопутствующие ей выставки Белферма, Белпродукт, Пищевая индустрия и Продмаш Полу Чупак. Белагра проводится с 1990 года и является крупнейшей демонстрационной площадкой достижений агропромышленного комплекса Республики Беларусь. Выставка призвана содействовать развитию экспортного потенциала агропромышленного комплекса нашей страны, международных связей, внедрению производства, достижений науки, техники и передового опыта. Among our projects, uh, there is a well-known brand Belagro. It's international agro-industrial exhibition and the joint events Belfarm, Belprodukt, Food Industry, uh, Prodmash, Holland, Opak. Uh, held every summer since 1990, it offers the visitors a comprehensive overview of the latest innovations and developments in agricultural sector of both local and foreign produce, producers. Mm -hmm. Uh, more than 400 exhibitors are the leading Belarusian companies, manufacturers of agricultural machinery, equipment and technologies for agriculture, crop production, animal husbandry, fish farming, processing and food industries. Uh, last year, more than 300 units of modern equipment used in agriculture were presented at the event, such as machinery for harvesting grain, for fertilizing and protecting plants, Machines for land reclamation, cultivation and harvesting of potatoes, sugar beets and other vegetables. Large-scale exposition blocks were formed by the leading local holdings in the mechanical engineering sector, such as um, Gomselmash Holding, Amkador Holding, uh, Babruiska Gramash, uh, Minsk Tractor Plants, Mars, uh, Minsk uh, Motor Plant and um, so on. Republican Association Bill Agra Service represents, is represented by more than 20, uh, 20 enterprises in our country. Scientific and Practical Center for Agricultural Mechanization of the National Academy of Sciences of Belarus and many others. Uh, more than 40 organizations of the National Academy of Sciences of Belarus and leading state universities always provide scientific and information support for the agro-industrial complex. Build Farm exhibition shows the latest achievements in the field of animal husbandry, such as equipment for keeping animals, feeders, incubators, automated installations for dairy farms, and more. Uh, Belarusian fishing farms are presented by uh, Belvat Horse on a separate block, so it's called Fisherman's Village, as you, as you could see on the slide. Uh, last year, on the main notice of the exhibition was the exposition um, experimental field. Varieties of crops such as wheat, rye, and barley were sown in September 2018, and at the exhibition in summer, one can see, compare, and evaluate the results. Originally, the seeds were offered by the Scientific and Practical Center of the National Academy of Science of Belarus and their colleagues from Germany. Another section of Belagra is Belprodukt food industry. More than 100 Belarusian manufacturers demonstrate a wide range of food products. Among the participants are the largest meat processing, dairy and cheese making plants, different holdings, bakeries and confectioners. The exhibition is traditionally accompanied by a rich business program. We offer about three dozen of thematic conferences and seminars, and it's a great opportunity to discuss a wide range of issues in the area of agriculture. Uh, the program of Belagra is filled with a variety of demonstrations, presentations, masterclasses and competitions. For, inst uh, for instance, the best plowman, champion of taste, competition for the best brew dairy cow and others. The contest, the best breeding horse is planned to be held this summer as well as the auction for horses. Uh, the business program of the event will help professionals discuss hot issues, find solutions, meet the latest scientific achievements and technological developments and see new directions for further development of the industry. Uh, since the agriculture in our country is developing dynam dynamically, uh, more than 180 foreign companies from 28 countries of the world were interested in participating in the exhibition last year. Actually, we had a, a, one company from Canada, which is called Tech Systems, which was represented at our exhibition as well. Uh, the following companies from 29 countries took part in the exhibition last year. Austria, Belarus, Bulgaria, Great Britain, Hungary, Germany, Denmark, Israel, India, and so on and so forth. 
Uh, machinery of world famous brands such as John Deere, Glass, Amazon, and New Holland, which was demonstrated at the exhibition, generated wide interest from local visitors. Uh, the exhibitions occupied the area of total 75,000 square meters. The number of visitors exceeded 65,000 people and more than 20 business delegations from Spain, Italy, Poland, Czech Republic, India, Zimbabwe, Georgia, Mongolia, Russia, and others participated uh, in the event. Uh, this year, we plan to extend the program of the exhibition. Uh, the emphasis will be given to Belagra Innovations. At this matter, the contest of inno innovative products will be held as a part of the exhibition program. Uh, this time, Pilagra will be held for the 30th time uh, in coming June, and we, play, we plan it to be the way uh, we thought it would be. So I would like to invite all of you to visit our international exhibition um, in June. So thank you for your time and for your attention. So thank you so much. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you for the information. So we feel that well, June is coming and hopefully we will have this event in Belarus in June. We are also working on, uh, as I have already mentioned, we are working on collecting the Canadian delegation, Canadian trade mission uh, of the representatives of agriculture uh, field. So we are not sure about the time because now the borders unfortunately are closed and we will simply will not have opportunity to, to get the delegation to Belarus. But anyway, Anyway, I think positive, and uh, even if not for Bell Agro this year, but probably for other occasion, we will have the delegation happen. Uh, now, I would like to tell you that after announcing the event, we had a lot of questions received from the Canadian companies regarding the procurement, public procurement system of Belarus. And that is why we invited the uh, director of National Center for Marketing of Belarus, Mr. Valery Sadoha, uh, to uh, speak to us today on the procurement system of Belarus. Uh, I would say that National Center for Marketing is one of the leading top uh, Belarusian consulting companies that renders a wide range of uh, services, including those uh, promoting foreign economic activities, and as well provide a support for procurement procedures in Belarus. So, Mr. Sadoha, please, now it's your turn. Thank you very much, Evgeny. Uh, Deputy Minister Igor uh, uh, Brilov said that he visit Canada. I visit Canada too, but it was 30 years ago. Uh, anytime I'm ready to take part in online conference, business conference, and so on and so on, because a lot of, uh, there are a lot of my relatives in Canada. Thank you. Great to know that. So we are waiting for you here. <laughs> we will work on your visit. A couple of words about our center. The National Center for Marketing provides assistance in establishment and development of trade and economic relations between partners in Belarus and the world. For 20 years, 22 years, the center has established a network of branches in, in all regional centers in Belarus and international partnership. Our organization conducts a wide range of marketing research, including marketing projects for foreign companies. Organize exhibition abroad, business visits of foreign delegations to Belarus, owns online video conferences, organize business meetings in forums with foreign participants in Belarus and abroad. I would, I would also like to know that the center is the operator of the national exposition of the Republic of Belarus on the World Expo 2020 in Dubai. The center publishing the Journal Expert of Belarus, which represents export potential of Belarusian organizations and Belarus as a whole. This journal could be of use for foreign companies. We also provide education services for specialists of Belarusian companies, which are involved in foreign economic activities in procurement. Mm -hmm. 
uh, portal export by is an electronic showcase of the Russian goods, services, and technologies, where I can easily find a partner in Belarus. All information is available worldwide 24 hours a day. Users from 180 92 countries of the world visit this website. Foreign companies have the opportunity to register and show their products and services, delivery, production, prices, and products. Any company from Canada can register on this portal and show goods, photo, uh, prices, uh, uh, delivering, uh, conditional delivering, and so on and so on. In order to register, it take not more than 20 minutes. 25 Belarusian companies are operating in the Canadian market and 152 Belarusian companies are interested in the Canadian market. They show it on the export portal export market. According to the current legislation of the Republic of Belarus in the field of procurements, National Center for Marketing and price study is the operator of information resources, which ensures the implementation of all procurement procedure, including public procurements by the Russian companies. State information and analytical system for management of public procurement, GIAS. Information system tenders, which is responsible for conducting procurement procedure from own funds as well as for construction. Currently, five companies from Canada are registered in the website WIC3BY. Uh, three companies were registered in 2019. Gozakupki by uh, the largest electronic trading platform covering about 85% of the e procurement market in the Republic of Belarus. Provides access to procurement procedure in electronic format ATP. Mm -hmm. uh, it is important to note that the share of e procurements in the total number of procedure in increasing every year. Yeah. Nowadays, all public procurement procedure in the Republic of Belarus, as well as some procurement procedure carried out by the Russian companies as their own expense, are now conducted in electronic form. A distinctive feature of electronic procedure is the format for suppliers to submit their proposals. Documents are placed on the electronic trading platform in the form of an electronic document using electronic digital signature. Uh, in order to participate in Belarusian procurement, suppliers have to follow several steps. The National Center of Marketing supports clients in each of them and provides a range of services that weekly and efficiently master in the electronic procurement market. First, using public key of electronic digital signature by the certification authority of the National Central Market. In order to obtain an electronic digital signature, foreign suppliers need to register in the website cmps.by, prepare the necessary package of documents and receive an electronic digital signature during their visit to the certification authority in the National Center Marketing. Uh, registration on and accreditation of the organization on the electronic trading platform www.gozakupki.by and the IC tenders www.icitrade.by in order to ensure the possibility of participation in procurement procedure in the Republic of Belarus. Foreign suppliers staff training in the organization conducting and participating in the electronic procurement procedure. Uh, participating in 
training seminars allows to acquire not only theoretical knowledge in the field of legislative regulation and electronic procurement procedure, but also practical skills in working with the electronic trading platforms. The information support of work participants in procurement procedure, search and provision of information on procurement procedure carried out in any country in the world in Congress with the subject of activity of the supplier. A mail notification about newly announced procedure in the accordance with the subject of activity in the supplier. Consulting support for participation in procurement procedure announced by the Russian companies. A resident of 39 countries participate in the tenders as a trading platform. The most active of them are represented on the side. Uh, slide. There is also information about international contracts and included on the Russian trading platform. That's all. Thank you very much. Uh, Evgeny, in the next couple of days, we can send to you full information about uh, how Canadian company can register on uh, our uh, site. Uh, yes, it would be great to receive this information. In your, your job, okay? Thank you so much, Mr. Sadofa. Thank you for your uh, kind presentation. It would be very helpful for us to receive this information, to share it with Canadian Eurasia Russia Business Association on their site, I suppose, Marina. It would be possible. So now, um, dear participants, do you have any questions on the procurement system in Belarus? Have we received anything? Uh, Dominique, we should have one question. I have forwarded it to you. Yeah. Please turn on microphone. Dominique, microphone. Yes, hi. So yes, I do have one question. Uh, I, I saw your excellent uh, website called export.by. Uh, is it possible for a Canadian company to promote its product there? On, the, on this website. Okay, thank you for the question. Is it free of charge? Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Yes. Expert buy? Yes, I will explain once again. So uh, uh, the question was from a. Просто на экспорт бай есть ссылки на IC Trade, на IC Trade. Если выходишь на IC Trade, там есть все условия, каким образом можно зарегистрироваться. Но я говорю, mm -hmm. что мы в ближайшее время пришлем к тебе да -да -да. расширенную информацию да. с подробностями, как, что, mm -hmm. какие шаги нужно mm -hmm. делать для того, чтобы зарегистрироваться. Пять yes. канадских компаний уже зарегистрированы. Сколько? Пять. Пять. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the answer is as follows. So expert.by expert has a link to the icetrade.by, another, another internet site. And there is an instruction how to get registered. So Canadian companies know how to do that because we have already a number of Canadian companies who have registered. And Mr. Sadoha will kindly share the information in the coming days on the instructions properly how to do that and we will share it with all the participants on this side of our event. I would like to stress that uh, five Canadian companies registered. Genesis Incorporation, AMB Tech, Land Park, uh, Selix Selman, um, uh -huh. Visit Vivitra Labs, the cardio question. So it just says to us that the Canadian companies know how to do that and we will explain additionally how to do that. 
So, Mr. Sadoko, thank you so much for your presentation. Okay. Thank you for very useful information. And now we are going to the second session of our conference. Yeah, and yeah Evgeny. Yeah, before yes. that, okay, I have another question. You see, when we were planning our conference, uh, we uh, were planning to also focus on green technologies. And we were reaching out. And I have a volunteer, Vera Saldatinka, who was helping me with that. And Vera, thank you very much for your contribution. So while speaking to them, they were asking me these questions. Okay, they are open to bring their technologies. And uh, well, just after the conference, as a follow-up, please inform us, okay, uh, are there any incentives currently in Belarus to attract green technologies? Okay, are there some examples that uh, foreign companies or maybe from Canada are already doing that? Uh, so a little bit more about green technologies. If there are some programs government is implementing, please uh, tell us a few words. We want to, uh, um, to clarify uh, what kind of uh, techno, I mean, uh, in what branches uh, you want to uh, talk about green uh, technologies. Uh, so it's uh, uh, energy system or it's agricultural uh, system. Uh, what kind of or just uh, our industry in what branch of our economy? Uh, could you please uh, clarify? Yes, it was like my question was to Evgeny while he was proposing and we are interested okay, about anything, just really anything because in Canada there are so many technologies in this field. Uh, but yes. I would like to add uh, our center providing uh, marketing research any any field. We can make marketing research and uh, answer any question about your, this topic. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, for this, what I wanted to tell, yes, we have uh, incentives uh, from the governmental side on supporting the development of green technology areas. So green technology is one of the branch for upcoming Bell Agri Conference. So this, this will be, you know, it depends on how creative you are. So they, uh, that will be uh, a green, uh, green technology sphere is very wide. So starting from a very specific things in agriculture and ending with the uh, some aerospace programs. Uh, mm -hmm. That is why uh, what we will do is that we will ask the National Center for Marketing to prepare a special, a special, uh, not a document, but non-paper regarding the green technology development of Belarus. And we will share also it after the conference with uh, Serba and with all our participants. Mm -hmm. Yes, very good. Thank you very much. Are there any questions, Dominique? I don't have any. Not so far. Mm -hmm. So now we are going, I suppose, thank you so much once again, Mr. Sadoha, for, for your presentation. And now we are going to the second session of our conference where we will know uh, about the success stories uh, of doing business in Belarus. Yes, exactly. So I would uh, introduce this company as a flagman, as a pioneer, that this is the biggest project right now between Canada and Eurasia in the agricultural fields and specifically in the agricultural machinery. So Dominique is uh, an international sales manager uh, of Val Metal Group. Okay, and uh, they are doing quite good. They have... Uh, uh, a representative in Eurasia, Mr. Andrei Xiomin. So I give you directly the, the, the right to speak. And Dominique, please, we are welcome to hear from you. Please share your presentation and your slides. And don't forget to turn on the, the microphone for us to hear you. OK, now you should hear me. Okay. So uh, thanks for, for having us. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. We had a lot of uh, interesting information from all the speakers, so uh, thanks for that. So as uh, Marina said, I'm in charge of the international sales for a company called Val Metal. Uh, I will present the company with the little PowerPoint.
All right. Okay. So uh, Val, Val Metal is a Canadian company. We are a group of company. Uh, we have six, let's say six major company in the group. Uh, so I will present them. Okay. So uh, our mission is to provide farmer with innovative and reliable equipment to mechanize and automate. Uh, we're, we're doing a lot of automation in, into the feeding area. We'll get back to this to this area. Uh, Val Metal is a um, family-owned company. I like to mention it. It's a, it's a decent-sized company. We're about 600 employees, but it's still a family-owned company. So it's it's uh, run and managed by the by by the family. There's true brothers and the parents. Everybody's still involved. In the company so I like to mention it because uh, we're, we're, we're big but the fact that it's still family owned company it's it allow us to be able to make some move or to adapt quickly to new market so uh, Vamel started in 1979 by Yvonne and Lise Valier which are which are the parent it was uh, originally it was just a machine shop and um, most of the business they were making for one company and this company went bankrupt. So they decided to, to make their own equipment. Uh, so that was in 1983 when we really started into the uh, designing of our own product. Uh, we started, uh, it's some things uh, we have mostly in Canada, but we have tower silo to store the feed in Canada. And we started with uh, silo unloaders and mixers, uh, mixers to, uh, to make TMR. And uh, over the year, we acquire about uh, 11 other companies. That's a little bit how the company uh, growed. Uh, so here's a little bit of a story uh, we see uh, on uh, <clears throat> on the pictures uh, or factory in uh, in Canada we ha we actually have uh, two factory in Quebec uh, factory in Ontario we have some factory in Wisconsin uh, also factory in California and we also have a, an office in China. So as I said, it's six companies, it's over uh, 600 employees. Uh, we export in over 25 countries and uh, we have about 150 dealers. So basically we manufacture equipment. We sell to uh, distributors in different country, like we have distributors in, in Eurasia and in, in many countries in Lithuania, Estonia, Russia, uh, many countries in Eurasia. And those distributor will sell to to dealers. That's our little bit or our model we're we're working with working with right now. So as I said, it's six different companies in the group. So the first one, the Val Metal, the orange logo, is everything what is related to a feeding. So we make uh, anyway. We'll go one by one. Uh, Silo Superior is. Um, the tower silo I was talking about the, for uh, for those who never come who never came to Canada you're maybe not too familiar with it but that's uh, that's uh, that's how we store uh, most of the feed are stored in tower silo uh, in Canada but also in the in some part of the U S um, we're the biggest uh, uh, tower silo builder. Uh, worldwide basically we make about 125 of these silo every year then Val Metal James Way uh, this is the company that makes manure management equipment so tankers pump uh, uh, scrapers mm, all that kind of equipment and with this company we're actually uh, building manure equipment for a company named De Laval. It's international company. For some of you might see it. We, we saw it in the Bellagro video. They were exhibiting in the, 
in the Bellagro. So we do have some equipment in, in Belarus. Uh, it's just, it's painted in blue and it's written De Laval because we do manufacture um, manure equipment for De Laval. So we, 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 we actually have quite a few equipment already in, in Belarus under the De Laval name, but still uh, build and manufacture in Canada. Uh, those are other products from the, from the Val Metal James way. Then this is the company we have in California. It's called Val Metal US Farm System. We're uh, dedicated into uh, uh, wastewater management. It's uh, basically it's separators. Uh, I can make a, maybe a very quick introduction for those who are not familiar, but the manure of the cows, it still have a lot of non-digested fiber in the manure. So we will separate the liquids from the solid, as you see the picture on the top. Uh, it's, it's separate and then the solid stays there and then uh, you can make different things with the solid. So um, you can make bedding for the cows. We will sanitary this, uh, this, this, dry, this dry manure and uh, you can make a comfortable bedding for the cows or you can use it as compost. So um, this company is, in, is based in California. Uh, as you can see, so all the separators, pump, agitator again. And then we have uh, Control Latex, which is actually Valmetal Automation, I uh, should say. Uh, this company makes all the control panels for all of our company because all of our equipment, if we're talking about the automatic feeding system or automatic uh, manure management system or automatic separators, it's all controlled by, by a control panel, automats. So uh, we have a different branch, which is Valmetal Automation that brings that uh, build all these panels for us. And then the last company, but not the least, is uh, the Mute. The Mute, uh, they make steel product, basically, uh, as you can see on the top right, they make, a, it might seem funny, it's a roof from a building, but it's the same roof we will use on the tower silo. So they make a lot of components that we do use in, in our other businesses. But uh, yeah, that's, that's the, the sixth company. And then uh, Valmetal Feeding. This is the first uh, company. That's, that was the, let's say it's a little bit the core. It was the first company. It's all the feeding equipment. Uh, in, in Canada, we started 25 years ago with automatic feeding system. So uh, basically, there's all sort of equipment that will bring uh, every ingredients into a mixer. You can see on the top right, the stationary mixer. So this will mix all the feed to make what we call TMR, uh, total mix ration. And then it will be distributed automatically uh, to the cow via maybe a feeder and rail, like you see on the left, or some feeder conveyors or some robotic feed cart as well. So we have a, quite a big range of product. So yeah, you can see the robots and rail, the silo loader, some choppers, uh, delivery carts, Mixer, uh, the control panel, the, the automatic system, conveyors, um, yes, all, all this kind of stuff. So uh, that presents a little bit uh, our group. Um, I was uh, with the Serba in a mission in, uh, in Belarus, uh, was it in 2018, if I'm not mistaken? So uh, I, I, I have some knowledge of the, of the market. I, I still believe uh, we can grow our, our share of the market in Belarus. Um, very interested and in, in looking forward into that. Um, as Marina, you said, we, um, <clears throat> we did now hire a, a representative for Valmetal in a Eurasian country. His name is Andrei Semin. Uh, unfortunately, I believe a sound doesn't work. I was uh, just speaking with him uh, just shortly, and I, I believe he tried with his phone. Unless Andrei, you hear me and you can say something, uh, I believe he cannot. You Hello, sound... colleagues. Hope you can hear you can hear me because from the beginning I had some 
had some problems with the sound. Can you hear me well right now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, fine. I just would like to add a couple messages to Dominic's presentation. My name is Andrei Stern, and I'm a uh, territory manager of our metro company in Russia, but either on the whole Soviet Union countries and Belarus as well. So, uh, as Dominic mentioned, actually we are not uh, new yeah, uh, with our equipment on the Belarus. Because, uh, from my background, I have been working for a Delaware company for more than 10 years, and I was responsible for such kind of equipment that Dominic mentioned on the presentation. And uh, so right now we have uh, more than 20 farms, dairy farms in Belarus that uh, have been working more than 10 years with the wild metal equipment, again, uh, like scrapers and uh, many uh, pumps to transport uh, many. So, but of course now we see it is time to actually enlarge our business, especially in Belarus, and uh, hope it is possible, of course, on a quite good communication together with Serba and all of you. Thank you very much, that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Andrei. Uh, I, th I think it's okay for me as well. Uh, I don't know if anybody have question, but that was enough. That's what that was our presentation. Uh, yes, Dominic, you see, can I uh, ask you the secret question? So, what do you think is uh, what advice could you give, okay, to companies uh, from Belarus, okay, from Russia, from Kazakhstan, willing? to sell their products here in Canada. Why I'm asking this question, this is because in this industry particularly, we know a lot of uh, well, cases that companies get together, even competitors. You see, sometimes they collaborate with a big, uh, large national exporter. Okay, sometimes it can be a partnership with a large foreign buyer or uh, you see, whatever. So do you have any advice? It may happen yeah. that you will find a good partner. Who knows? Yeah, for a Eurasian company to come sell in Canada, you mean, eh? Yes, Eurasian yeah. company. Only uh, you are looking for partnerships. I know yeah. that you are looking for them, so feel free to, to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that, uh, how can I say that? Um, I have experience in the past, for example, in Russia or, or other Eurasian country, when we start to do business with a company, uh, we have to go through... Uh, quite heavy contracts and, and it's i think it's really important in at least for uh, on the eurasian side to work with contract which anyway in our case it's not some things we're very very we don't work that much we, we like to get to know each other before we make uh we make some contracts so i think uh, i don't know if it's uh in the canadian culture but uh, I think we we like to to trust each other, and I think we don't, we we before trying to make some heavy contracts. I think we should uh, just just go slowly and uh, get to know each other. <laughs> Talking on the for my side, I, I don't know that that might be the easiest that uh, the advice I could tell. Yes, exactly, because we know that there are very many differences in the work ethics. Yes, yeah. and just there are some even special tools, okay, for establishing trust. How you do that through contracts and through speaking, through ethics, whatever. Yes, and maybe one day we will speak and make a separate uh, online conference. So, if there are no any questions, I believe there are no. Danik, I thank you very yeah. much. Uh, up, Danik, we have, uh, oh, okay. We have a question from Carm yeah. asking if uh, if you know if any of your clients. Have been reusing cow manure to create methane gas. To to do biogas, you mean? Yes. In Belarus or in anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. Yeah, yeah, yes. With the with the um, with the U.S. farm system, uh, yes, there is uh, uh, for sure some place that are doing biogas with the separated. Uh, manure uh, it's it depends the country in some country uh, there is some law about uh, making gas after uh, separated manure but yes there is some place that it has been done yes and Marina we have a general question people mm -hmm. are asking 
if the participants can exchange their contact information or if the contact information of everyone will be distributed by SERPA afterwards to add all the participants? Oh, very good question. You see, I suggest we proceed with those okay, ways. So you have on hand, you have a program and there are speakers and there are distinguished guests. So please find them on the social media. They are all there. Yes, after the conference, I will distribute a list of participants, but we are not allowed to reveal the personal information. Or you see another choice for you. You have here too to write private messages to each other. So feel free to do that. Did I answer the question? Okay. So then we go to the next speaker. Okay, I invite Sergei Agintsov okay, from famous Schneider Group, that is a good partner of Serba. And Sergei, please uh, speak uh, about forms of legal presence and taxation in Belarus and any valuable advice on what's not working and what are the difficulties. Okay, feel, feel free to, to share. And Dominique, could you please uh, take out your, your presentation? because I cannot change slides. Yeah, thanks Marina. We are very happy to be here and to present our slides. So yes, thanks for our me. joint co cooperations with uh, Schneider Group and Serba. Yes, so one, one, one second, it's, you won't, oh, okay. Yes, they need to Yes, Sorry. great. Yeah, now, ma after. Ma yeah, 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 okay. Now I'm go going to share the slides. So, okay. Yes, please. Yes, uh, in the next couple of minutes, we will briefly describe uh, av available forms of business presence and taxation in Belarus. So you are definitely aware that uh, currently uh, Belarus provides quite good opportunities for attracting foreign businesses, for doing uh, uh, foreign businesses uh, and growing the business in Belarus by uh, providing gov various governmental support, uh, offering good uh, technical and logistical infrastructure and uh, the most uh, uh, um, uh, the most uh, greatest here is that Belarus provides the direct access to the markets of the Russian Economic Union. That is why uh, majority of Canadian business should definitely consider Belarus as a place for placing investments. So let's speak about the uh, forms of legal presence uh, which are currently uh, offered for foreign business in Belarus. You can see the uh, couple of them. So uh, legal entity, rep office, or the project permanent establishment, uh, and the joint venture or a partnership. Uh, unlike in Russia, local legal environment does not provide an opportunity for a foreign company to open a branch office for doing a business in the country. If your business model involves long lasting presence in the market, it is worth choosing to set up a local legal entity. For any short term projects, these can be completed uh, by having a registered permanent establishment with the tax authorities controlling the territory where your project is going to be performed or entering into a simple partnership agreement with the local business partner, if you definitely have some. Speaking about uh, types of legal entities, well, there are three most commonly chosen by foreign businesses. These are LLC or limited liability company. Uh, in, Canada, in Canada, if I'm not mistaken, uh, there is a similar structure called limited liability partnership. Uh, then we have stock company or corporation and unitary enterprise. The first two are generally similar by their nature uh, for uh, as limited liability companies or stock corporations according to United States laws. But the set one represents a unique local structure with its specifics in terms of corporate ownership, transfer of shares and funding options. Speaking about uh, entity registration, uh, normally it takes uh, up to one week to get the entity registered, including bank, bank accounts opened. 
as concerns uh, obtaining a registration certificate, this can be handled with one day. All you need is just to prepare and file a document. And uh, we have technical possibility to file the documents electronically and receive the certificate just in one day. Uh, considering the uh, structure named Rep Office, please uh, pay attention that these structures uh, are normally established at a market investigation stage. Uh, when your company would like to perform some researchers, to make some advertising, to find for right partners, uh, or to be engaged in other preparatory or auxiliary activities. Uh, selling activities, except for selling tickets uh, by airplane, uh, uh, sorry, airlines, rail, road, or um, transport companies, are not allowed to using the rep office structure in Belarus. Uh, it will normally take up to one month uh, to get this uh, structure registered. Now coming to a permanent establishment, uh, frankly speaking, this is a tax concept rather than not a legal company, but nevertheless, uh, we do have uh, many projects already performed in Belarus by foreign companies uh, that were using these structures. Uh, what are important uh, tips here to consider is that this structure is definitely applicable to construction related projects, uh, including uh, the projects that provide technical engineering and assistance services, for instance, startup and commissioning of various facility services, equipment related education and learning services, and so on. And uh, the total duration of services should exceed 108, 180 days. Uh, your company should be registered with the tax authority controlling the territory where the project is going to be performed. Uh, all local accounts um, as concerns local operations should be done in line, in line with local accounting and tax standards, uh, full corporate income tax and value added tax liability. Uh, important to note here is that uh, if your headquarter company has some costs in offshore and these costs are directly attributed to the permanent establishment structure in Belarus, these costs can be tax deducted, deducted for corporate income tax purposes in Belarus. And we do have some specific procedures for having these costs tax deducted in Belarus. Uh, what else is important to note is that there is a tax-free transfer of profits upon the project completion and a full input VAT credit refund from the budget. Coming to the next structure, uh, joint venture or the partnership. Uh, this structure may be used when you have a local business partner and uh, there is a potential opportunity to implement uh, construction or any other related project in Belarus without establishing a separate entity for doing that. Here are some important tips to consider that uh, you should have a simple partnership agreement signed with a local partner. Your local partner will be acting as a main partner towards the authorities, uh, including tax reporting and other reporting. All partner contributions, transactions, revenue and costs shall be booked on separate accounts of the main partner entity. Uh, taxation is generally done at the main partner level and there is no uh, tax on dividend uh, when you have the project completed and uh, the decision and passed to distribute the dividends to get uh, the portion of profit out of this. So uh, speaking about taxation, here you can see the overview of the main corporates and personal taxes payable in Belarus. Uh, it is worth mentioning that uh, generally all corporate taxes we have, they are in line with OECD standards and OECD approaches. As for specific taxes, please pay attention to the so-called offshore tax, which is payable at 15% on any transfer of funds from local businesses to companies or sole traders registered with uh, offshore jurisdictions. Or if a local company has bank accounts opened in offshore jurisdictions and there are funds credited to, this, uh, to such accounts. 
So we need to uh, account for and calculate offshore tax. Currently, the list of uh, offshore uh, territories is about 53. So we have 53 offshore territories. A number of tax benefits uh, providing low tax rates or full tax exemptions are granted by the state to companies being members or residents of specific territories uh, such as free economic zones, industrial park, Great Stone, high tech park, and so on and so forth. So here you can see um, the um, so-called investor considerations which help you to choose the right tax benefits depending on your business model and the business sector you represent. So for instance, uh, we have quite good opportunities for high tech business, for IT and related business, artificial intelligence, uh, cryptocurrency mining, internet of things, technologies, and so on. For greenfield and localization projects, we have uh, three economic zones, six zones within the territory of Belarus, and a huge industrial park near Minsk Great Stone. So uh, another options offered by the states are some tax incentives provided to companies registered with so-called rural areas. These are definitely for mid-sized and small businesses. And uh, if you would like to operate uh, various, various facility infrastructure, then you may consider uh, signing an investment or a public private partnership agreement with the state. So uh, here you can see a kind of comparison between the general tax rates and the potential effect from tax incentives provided by the state. So in most cases, uh, there is an exemption from uh, corporate taxes, as well as significant reduction in personal income tax and social taxes. Uh, last but not least, so please consider these points when making assessment uh, of the pros and cons of your business expansion to Belarus. So you need to define uh, what is uh, your specifics of your business case here in Belarus and afterwards thinking about the right structure to, set, to establish. Uh, to think about the funding options, because we have some and each option has its own pros and cons. Uh, applicable and the right taxation treatment for your business or your structure in Belarus. Return on investments and uh, if you have some reliable local partners in Belarus. And we at Schneider Group are completely prepared to become your reliable business partner in Belarus by contributing our expertise and local knowledge for the growth of your business. Thank you for your attention and should you have any questions, uh, we would be definitely to address them all uh, later on. So, I'm done. Thanks. Sergei, thank you very much for a very detailed advice. Okay, could you just please name at least a few companies, foreign companies, preferably maybe from North America or Europe that are doing business in Belarus and they're doing okay and they have good perspectives. Do we have such examples? Yeah, definitely we do have some. Uh, so the most recent example we have uh, uh, has company from Switzerland. So uh, they are currently doing full localization project with industrial park Great Stone. And we are assisting. We we have been assisting them from the very beginning, from the market entering, and now we are uh, providing the full scope of services to these companies. And other success stories we have. Uh, so definitely, Stadler company, Stadler, Stadler Rail company. So you know you you have this. Uh, we have a couple of companies from UK. Um, they are working with um, uh, food uh, food industry, dairy industry products. Um, we also have some companies from uh, Germany, from uh, Netherlands, uh, quite companies from IT sector. Uh, frankly speaking, uh, uh, at the moment there are no company from Canada, but we do have some uh, US investors okay. here. Okay, and I know also Schneider Group, you are doing market research and industry research. It's just to your knowledge. 
what advice would you give to Canadian companies? Because we have so here also people that are looking for opportunities to collaborate. It's that knowledgeable, uh, I call them diaspora, okay, who are, well, in fact, very valuable people. They were assimilated in Canada and they are looking, they are sort of like bridges. Could you give a few examples and direct them? Where should they look? Industry so, segment. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes, definitely. We are assisting our clients in uh, finding the right business partners on their markets, on their select, uh, selected markets. But nevertheless, uh, please carefully assess each step. This is our solution for the, for the potential investor. So, of course, uh, there are uh, pros and, co uh, and cons for, for what, what has been written in the, in the agreement or what, uh, what the law says. So, carefully assessment and due diligence should be presented at any stage. So. Okay, I don't have any other questions. Demini, do we have? Okay, good. So then, Sergey, thank you very much for your Thanks. support and we are looking forward to see you again and invite yeah. your body to your events as well. Yeah, definitely. Thanks. Thank you very much. Okay, and our next speaker is uh, from the distribution industry. Okay, Karm. Uh, he will, he is very busy in fact. Maybe this is, well, among a few industries that now are booming. Okay, and uh, I know it was not very easy for him to come to make it happen. So, Karma, I invite you. Please uh, speak. How are you doing? Okay, during these uh, critical times, as we say. Yes, okay, yes. And uh, your topic is renewable energy. Uh, yes, transport so, solutions. Yes. Absolutely. Um, are you able to visualize my uh, presentation? Not yet. We just see you. Okay. Share, share it on the screen, please. Okay. I just did. Do you see it now? Uh, let me go back here. I'm sharing the screen. Are you able to see it? Not yet. Let's see here. My apologies. Uh, I can. Uh, find it if you want for you yes now yes I'm yes yes no no i have it here it's okay. you should be getting able to get it now yes. are you able to see it now yes That's, uh, fantastic uh, yeah. very good well marina thank you for having me and thank you to the server organization real pleasure to be here as you mentioned it is a very challenging period uh in the transport uh, supply chain from uh, illegal uh, rail blockades here in canada about a month ago and now uh, the coronavirus has uh, definitely displayed uh, uh, numerous challenges for, even for the experienced people like ourselves to deal with uh, transport at the moment. Um, our exports are still very strong ironically even with a lot of shutdowns which is still a good sign for the Canadian economy at the moment. Um, here's a little bit on me and our presentation. I'm just trying to now get my mouse properly in order. All right. So this is my first page. This is basically uh, the presentation is titled Renewable Energy Transport Solutions. I'm gonna be focusing on what we have done in the renewable energy side as per uh, our theme, okay? I work for the company ACS Logistics. It was uh, recently purchased in the end of uh, October last year by the Manitoulin group of companies. So we're now uh, part of a larger corporation, always Canadian. Uh, now, basically this is, oh, my apologies, okay. So, table of contents. I'm going to go through what I'm uh, basically going to be outlining in our presentation today. I'll be introducing myself. Uh, obviously, the company itself uh, at ACS. At the same time, I'm going to be focusing on the renewable energy biofuel specialty that we have going on. Also, the biomass. Uh, at the same time, I will be outlining the different type of commodities in the renewable energy side that we actually export and what's going to be happening for future and uh, basically from 2030 to 2050 on. Uh, another topic that uh, I was told to cover and I think is also very interesting is to focus on renewable energy technology that's going on in Canada that will definitely be uh, of great interest to the rest of the world. Uh, I was at the Eco Mondo show in Italy last year in November with my colleague Pina and we were just um, ecstatic by the different amount of innovations that are going on also by Canadian companies today. Uh, the last part of my 
presentation will definitely consist of uh, the different types of um, methods or ports that you can move uh, cargo from Canada to Belarus. And uh, I'll end the presentation with just a little bit of an, an important notification in terms of what you need to do when to export to Belarus. So let's go into the next slide. Okay, so uh, this is me. I have 24 years of uh, experience in this trade. I basically had uh, most of my uh, experience in the shipping line industry. I have now have 11 years of experience at uh, ACS Logistics. Uh, I'm the general sales manager and business development manager for the company. I have a specialty in renewable energy. I've been moving renewable energy products for over 14 years now. Um, my educational background, I have a bachelor degree in uh, commerce, international business with a biofuel, uh, advanced biofuel certificate. And I went and get this certificate specifically to further comprehend all my clients' businesses. Okay, so this is the company itself. Associated Cargo Specialist was basically founded in 1986 uh, by Mr. Dan Gleason, a family owned company. Uh, he built a, a phenomenal company to the point where he had clients over 30 years in the reefer uh, cargo business, basically uh, specializing in all sorts of imports and exports of meats. Um, Payne and I had organized and uh, created with Dan Gleason the NBOCC uh, dry cargo division roughly 11 years ago. And as I mentioned earlier, we've been purchased by the group of Manitoulin uh, back in October of 2019. Uh, we are all over social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, and uh, Twitter, and Instagram. You can follow us there for sure. Now, our services. What we do, basically, we have a reefer to container division service. So, we have specialists uh, in the company that this is all they do. They basically specialize in every type of reefer container movements uh, for uh, the company, both on an import-export basis. We basically import and export all sorts of seafood, potatoes, french fries, uh, frozen pork, frozen different types of meats, uh, even Christmas trees, ironically. And that's a, that's a niche that the company has, a big, big specialty that we got going on. We also have a freight forwarding and NVOCC division that just specializes on general dry cargo, uh, machinery, metal, name it, we, have, we basically do it. We also have an intermodal division called EMP service, which allows us now to conduct truck and rail movements from door to door all over North America, which is very difficult to find, especially with the reach that we have, because it's a partnership of all different rail companies in, uh, in the region of uh, North America. We also represent uh, Bermuda International Shipping Line as a shipping line agent here in Canada. Uh, at the same time, we have a tourism division, which basically is a common factor of us representing Trend Italia here in Canada as their official agent and in the US actually. We have an air division that conducts import air division. And one of the uh, most booming sides of our business right now is our ISO tank and uh, flexi tank division to where we're presently um, installing flexi bags and moving all different sorts of liquids. And our ISO tank division, which has been uh, rather busy these days, uh, moving all sorts of different types of uh, biofuel feedstocks for the biodiesel and renewable energy uh, diesel trade. This is basically a nutshell of all our services as I just basically pointed them out to you. I won't uh, stay too long on it because I've already mentioned it to you. I have included the hands uh, here with the world on it because I want to emphasize that this business is all about people. And we are very experienced people, we're good people. I think we are hardworking people and we pride ourselves on providing optimal service. Yes, Carl, uh, we have just two minutes, okay, yes. for you. Yeah. Very I'm, going, good. I'm going, I'm going. All right, so this is basically a slide that uh, has our renewable energy biofuel export uh, exports divisions here. As you can see, uh, we are basically exporting all different types of commodities that are for the biodiesel trade. If you notice there, we have a company called Cubex, which is in the Baltics, they're in the Latvia region, they service also uh, Belarus. A lot of the uh, biodiesel right now is being uh, going into uh, airplanes, diesel cars, uh, shipping lines, and even into Formula One cars as of next year. So we are very, very active in this actual trade. Another trade we're very active in the renewable energy side is the biomass side. Ironically, um, Belarus is uh, also very experienced in this trade uh, with wood pellets, wood briquettes, and wood chips. 
uh, we're basically exporting a lot of these products to fuel greenhouses, homes, and industrial plants replacing coal. Um, another thing that we're doing right now is basically in, we're looking now for the future of uh, the business. A lot of different minerals are going into the electricity side of the business. So basically lithium and other type of minerals that I listed here are things that we foresee being very, very popular by 2030 to 2050. Uh, now, going into renewable energy technology, which is something we want to discuss. We have certain clients right now that are in the starting phases. Some of them are building, uh, are creating, excuse me, uh, biomethanol and bioethanol through municipal waste. This is a phenomenal technology right now in Canada that uh, they're basically selling their technology on a turnkey basis all over the world. Uh, we're part of that, with, and uh, it's because of our uh, experience with uh, gases and biogases and biofuels. At the same time, there's a few other companies right now in Quebec even that are converting uh, plastic into bio oils. Uh, there's also a lot of paralysis uh, procedures with certain companies right now turning tire waste and uh, old plastic into bio crude oil. A lot of these plants are in the building phases. Uh, we also see a big uh, jump coming up in hydro technology, wind energy and, and biofuel, and even from coffee waste. Uh, LNG gas is also something that will be obviously very, very big in uh, the very near future. I'd like to also point out an organization that's helped a lot of companies start up with the technology here in Quebec called Ecotech Quebec. Uh, they're part of the Cleantech uh, Canada's cluster. And uh, I would definitely advise any companies that are in this field to uh, reach out to them because I think they'll bring a lot of value. Yes, Barb, and uh, can you, uh, can conclude? Yes, uh, yes, yes, uh, yes, of course, of course. Now, all our different services from Canada, we have five different ports that can service container movements. We have uh, from Halifax, we have 21 days from Merce Lines and Hapa Lloyd, 16 days. We can cater uh, Belarus, Minsk from uh, Montreal port and with four different services. We then have one service actually that a lot of people don't know too much about is Valleyfield. We have a port in Valleyfield that operates about eight months of the year. And they can actually export and handle large uh, cargo, uh, basically outside of uh, overdimensional, so to speak. Another, uh, then we have the West Coast for the clients that are in the West Coast that basically can cater the market. Uh, longer transit time, but at least the possibilities are there and at least you have five options. Uh, the other thing I just want to point out, you can basically go through this on your own free time. And if you need information, there are important notes when to export to Belarus. Uh, very minimal restrictions, but you have to have uh, a Euro-Asian conformity uh, certificate. And I think I wrapped it up as fast as I could. I apologize if it took too long, but uh, thank you so much for this and thank you for having me. I hope to help anybody uh, with any questions or anything you may have. Yes, Carm, you please still stay here and dear participants, any questions for Carm? Sure. Thank sure. you very much, Carm. And could you please uh, give me, me the, the room to upload another yeah. presentation? Sure. Stop sharing, please. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. And now we are calling for a team. Okay, uh, Danton uh, is a very okay, important also member for Surabak. So, Team, please uh, tell us, give us your advice about doing business in Belarus in terms of settling some conflicts. Uh, this is always uh, something that can happen. Team, this is your presentation. I'm ready. Team, we don't hear you yet. Hi, can you hear me now? Oh, yes. Yes. Welcome. Good. <laughs> Great, thanks, thanks for having me and thanks to you, Yevgeny, and whoever else was involved in, in organizing what is a very informational uh, conference. Um, for those of you not familiar with uh, Denton's, uh, we are the world's largest law firm with uh, just over 10,000 lawyers spread out um, in 180 countries. I'm based in Montreal, um, but was based in Moscow for seven years before moving here and so I've been doing business in Russia and Belarus and, and other neighboring countries uh, for a decade now. Um, go ahead, Marina. Yes. Um, I, I, I want to specify that I'm coming at this from the perspective of 
looking at for the, the sort of best case scenario on how to structure things for um, foreign companies who are investing um, in Belarus. Um, it's important that um, any deal you do, you involve um, Belarusian lawyers. Uh, we don't have an office there, but we do work with firms there, including um, in the past SPP, who I think one of the lawyers uh, is on uh, is in the group. Um, so whatever I'm telling you, you have to adapt it to the local reality and make sure it works um, from from a Belarusian legal perspective. Go ahead, uh, Marina. Mm -hmm. um, if you are uh, investing with a partner or as a minority shareholder um, in a business in Belarus, in the ideal scenario, um, you try to mitigate or isolate yourself from from risks associated with an unfamiliar legal system as best you can. Structurally, one of the ways to do that that you see in this chart is um, if you have a business that's on the ground in Belarus, um, you have that business, the, the entity that operates that business, 100% um, owned by an intermediate company in a more familiar jurisdiction. That could be Canada, that could be really anywhere that you're more comfortable um, with. And in terms of your relationship with your business partner, whether it's your joint venture partner or your other shareholders, you, you, you conduct that at the level of the holding company under a legal system that you're more um, familiar with, whether that's uh, a Canadian law, um, UK law is popular, uh, New York law, um, something that is um, more familiar to the investor and you're, you're able to get your head around how things work a little bit better. Next slide, please, Marina. Mm -hmm. um, I want to distinguish between governing law uh, of a contractual arrangement and jurisdiction. Uh, in other words, how, how disputes are resolved and who has the authority to resolve those disputes. Um, I've already touched on governing law. Um, you, even if you have just a simple contract and you're not establishing a business on the ground uh, in Belarus, but you're simply, for example, a supply contract, um, you want to think about foreign governing law for that as well. Again, simply so that you uh, are dealing with a legal system that you're more comfortable with. Um, next slide, please. Marina. Now, when, what happens when you have disputes under um, a contract? Well, the way to come at this is assuming you've, you've, you've been able to um, get your counterparty to agree to a, a contract governed by uh, foreign law, um, you have a choice between um, court, court dispute resolution. You just simply go to the national courts of the legal system that you've chosen the law from or arbitration. And the reason that you should, you should do your best to um, get arbitration in your contract is that um, a Belarusian court will only enforce a foreign judgment from a court under very limited circumstances. Belarus is, uh, is party to a number of treaties on this subject, but they tend not to be with, with um, the countries where the investments are coming from uh, for the purposes of this call. Counterparties to those treaties tend to be Russia, Ukraine, um, regional uh, countries with whom Belarus has a, a, a longer and more um, established relationship. Belarus is, however, party to the New York Convention, which is uh, on the in, uh, enforcement of arbitra arbitral awards. And what that means is that uh, if you obtain an arbitral ruling uh, under the terms of your contract and you then bring that ruling to um, a Belarusian court in order to enforce against your uh, counterparty, the court is obligated to uh, enforce that ruling. Now, there are very few exceptions that I won't get into, but they tend to be procedural and easily avoidable. Um, I think that's all I have, um, Marina. Mm -hmm. This one, this one. Last one, last slide. I'm just going to check the chats. I don't know if any of them are directly related to what I said, but I'll have a quick look. 
I didn't receive any questions here personally. Yeah, okay. You, okay. And uh, Lemini, can you confirm that we don't have any questions? Oh, I would have one question. Okay. So I understand from your, thank you, first of all, for your presentation, Tim. And uh, the, uh, so I understand from what you're saying that it's better to have an arbitration clause in a contract and to have uh, the choice of jurisdiction if you choose Canadian courts, let's say that you give jurisdiction to Canadian courts, then you will have a foreign judgment which may not be executable in Belarus. But if you have an arbitration award that results from your arbitration clause, this is easily normally executable in Belarus. Am I correct? Yeah, that's correct, um, Dominic. And the one thing that I would that I would point out is that some of this depends on your counterparty. If your if your counterparty has assets, for example, in places where Canadian court judgments are enforceable, then you may be comfortable with uh, courts versus arbitration. If they have operations in London, for example, a London court will enforce a, a Canadian judgment, as will most European uh, Western European courts. So, but generally, yes, that that's precisely what we're saying. Would you say that Belarusian courts usually are independent, that they need to really apply the rule of law? Well, uh, they're, that's a, they're not as, it's a legal system that's still developing. Um, and I think compared to courts in um, Canada, they probably are more susceptible to um, political pressures, but the, even if they weren't, um, even if they weren't, um, I would still recommend the same thing because an arbitral award is very difficult for a court there not to enforce. There's very limited procedural and kind of public policy um, exceptions, but generally if it's been obtained within, you know, within the, the, the terms that are, have been agreed in the contract, they will enforce it. Even if you have an, a court that is properly functioning, not under um, any undue influence in Belarusia, there are many, many, many more grounds to challenge um, a judgment. And as a starting point, they, they're not under a treaty obligation to enforce it. Thank you very much. Kim, You're thank welcome. You. Uh, thank you very much for participating and we look forward to collaborating uh, with Dentons in their future and right now also thank you very much and uh, so uh, we are closing we if you don't have any questions I confirm that I received the question about okay tenders so I think telecommunications tenders also conducted through that site uh, that um, from the center of marketing uh, the, the, the president or the director of the, Valeri Sadoho, the director of the marketing center was speaking about. We will require uh, detailed information about that for you shortly. So also by tomorrow, we will uh, publish the recording of this uh, conference. We are always open okay, to your questions and uh, feel free to ask them. Okay, we have another one. Well, questions are just now coming. Are there any livestock genetics and technology companies active in Belarus? Okay, ask them. I am. I cannot. Okay, ask you right now. But this is your last chance to really ask questions, and we will answer to you. There is Evgeny, who will help us, and we have look uh, so many partners who will help us with that. So, any other questions? We are uh, waiting for them. And uh, so you had also a list of distinguished guests. We were planning to have like a bit of a consultation for you and we were inviting you to use actively chat. So I think everybody is satisfied. If you had your questions, you were able to ask them directly. If not, you are asking them now. Uh, on my side, I think uh, everything is satisfied. Okay. Yes, Maria, yeah, if you allow me. Uh, once again, uh, dear participants, feel free to uh, ask your questions in the chat, and we will consider them, and we will send the, uh, we will publish all the 
uh, uh. answers, very open and very specific. Uh, that is why you are free to uh, to send them in chat. Uh, well, a couple of words uh, for the conclusion. I would like to thank you, uh, all of you who found it possible to join us today. And despite all the circumstances, uh, I think that uh, we made this conference relatively interesting and we can call it successful. Uh, on the embassy's part, uh, what I wanted to tell you is that uh, we in the embassy uh, understand very clearly that uh, uh, such kind of events like uh, video bridges or online conferences or uh, country presentations, they are just a basement for cooperation. And, uh, uh, so-called the walls and the roof of cooperation is the direct contact between the two co the, the representatives of business of the two countries and uh, the mutual trust of course and uh, I ask you to consider the embassy of Belarus in Canada uh, as your strategic ally uh, as a, a, a site uh, which aim is to facilitate the direct cooperation between the two countries, uh, to facilitate the establishment of direct contacts. That is why I would like to urge everyone uh, you know, here, uh, if you have any kind of questions, any interests relating Belarus, if you consider in Belarus uh, as a place for doing business, if you have a partner, if you have any kind of concerns regarding legislation, etc please feel free to contact the embassy because we are here so-called to serve you and we are here to work on, uh, on expanding bilateral cooperation. That is why, uh, Marina, please could you show once again the slide with my uh, contact details. There is an email there mentioned as well as the um, even cell phone number mentioned. So please uh, write it down if you have any kind of questions feel free to contact uh, us uh, wherever you're comfortable. Uh, once again, thank you so much for your uh, attention, for your consideration. Uh, please keep calm, stay healthy, take care, and uh, thank you for your participation in this event. Yes. Okay, so. Uh, okay, guys, thank you. Thank you, thank you. It was our pleasure to thank present. You. Thank on this you. event, and we stay, stay healthy and yeah, stay in time. Bye bye. Absolutely. Bye -bye. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Thank, thank you all. Bye bye.